Why are we getting suggested lone players and then the lit is just thrown in the mix? Okay, yeah, thank you, Scout. Virgil van Dyke, have you <coughs> taken a look at our bank account, mate? We could barely afford his left foot. How much is this? 149, sir. I've got 53. F you bastard. Ed. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. Today, a complete managerial power shift is about to take place. We've never really done anything like this before. We're about to put our transfer strategy into the hands of an outside source. Specifically, our GTN scouts. Yeah, remember these guys? I know you probably haven't used them since FIFA 14, but they still exist. We're starting up a fresh new career with our only outlet of signing players being our recommendations from our scouts, all the reports we get sent back. I personally can't have any say. Sir BCHD has been kicked into the passenger seat for this one. I've trust issues before but boy I think they're about to be pushed to their limits in this video. Can we take Malaga, a team that have been struggling in the Spanish second tier? The former Champions League quarter finalists deserve better. Our main goal is to take them back to competing with the best in La Liga. The transfers could either go horribly wrong or yeah I don't think there's any alternative. We're going into this one with a blind eye. I don't know what these guys are going to throw at us. Maybe sit back relax and watch what all unfolds because it's about to be an emotional roller coaster. Now let's meet this Malaga squad I know they've been desperate for promotion for so many years, but just haven't been able to achieve it. Maybe we've thrown in a bombastic transfer strategy that'll somehow click and make the team a cohesive unit. All the scouts just continue to recommend us dead players. I'm not sure. And in the office, we have got 50 million pounds. We initially started with eight, but I gave ourselves that 50 million pound boost just so that we had enough money in order to hire more scouts. I'm not going to be spending uh, exuberant amounts of money. I just wanted to hire new scouts. Obviously, they cost like three mil, one mil, two mil. We just need that financial security for at least the first season. Because look at this. I want to hire better scouts. I don't want two-star, three-star scouts. I want the best of the best on my books, not these frauds. But my main outlook for this first season is to just hire every single scout, get some admin done, and really hone in on the exact kind of places I want them to scout, what kind of players I want them to bring me back. I know he's a fellow Italian, but I'm just going to straight up go ahead and fire our boy Valerio Rizzi. What I can do with the Portuguese Magalan is fire him straight away. We don't want a three-star scout. We want five stars all across the board and that is what Fernando Llorado is going to provide. Just spent 3.6 million on him, a brand new five star scout. Let's go for the best option here. It's either Robert Goulevev or Samuel Dumont from Belgium. I'll go with the Belgian. Robert Goulevev for 2.5 million pounds. That's already like what? 5 million pounds spent right there. But now we have wiped our slate clean. We are gaining a new scouting network and we are literally redistributing all of them. We'll see if we can get any more generated here. We've got the Chinese Chong Kun He. Five star, five star, three Point six million. Take my money. Welcome on board to Team Malaga as we have an Aussie we could potentially sign up. No, he's actually from New Zealand. I look like the biggest fool in Australia right now, but we're going to pay upwards of nearly three million pounds. And now it's time to send them all over the world. This scout is ready for some missions. All right, sounds like we're running some dangerous FBI operations. It's not that deep, FIFA, trust me. So we've assigned our scouts missions behind the scene. All the admin work is done. We've got Luca Igrul off to Spain. Chong Kun He will be scouting in England. Ed Williams is headed off to France. Robert Gulubev has been sent out to Italy as Samuel Dumont is going to be headed over to the Netherlands. And finally, Fernando Llorado, the Spaniard, will be on a trip to Germany. And here are the instructions we've set out. Who are the six key areas slash positions I've really gone for? So striker, we've gone for pacey, prolific, attacking minded, promising. Any position, just someone that's first team quality, box to box, defensive minded. We need a goalkeeper, that's first team quality. We've gone for a winger with plentiful options right here. Attack minded, pinpoint crosser, dribbler, first team quality, pacey and play maker, a fullback that is pacey and attack and minded that can bomb up and down the wings. And then of course, a center back who has an aerial threat is defensive minded and strong and tall. The flights are booked, the scouts have landed and the instructions are laid out clear. Let's hope these lads recommend us some future ballers because boy, I'm counting on it. It usually takes a month to get these scout reports back. So I've literally wasted one month or half of the transfer window, if you will. These are the sacrifices I have to make to get this video working. Now in the first report back, I'm looking at some names here, but a lot are out of our price range. Tyrese Campbell might be an option here. We'll add him to the shortlist. Florian Kruger. He looks like an up-and-coming German prospect, so we'll add him. Kali Muendo, I'm also interested in, but he is out on loan. And Miron Buadu is just way too expensive. So, good start. Decent start so far. These are our defensive-minded options that we can go for in this transfer window. We've got a few budget slash hidden gem ideas like Jimmy. Good old Jimmy. We'll put him on the transfer list. We have actually so many goalkeeper options. I don't know what it is from various countries as well. This scout not as only gone 
gone from Germany, but he has just uh, bundled everything in together. I really don't even know how the GTN works, but we have just got so many different goalkeeping picks. Seems like our center back options have been a little more cut down quality over quantity. Why are we getting suggested lone players and then Delit is just thrown in the mix? Now, looking through our pasty, attacking minded fullbacks, yeah, our scout has just completely gone savage mode. He's brought us back players that we can't even afford. I'm going to make it a rule that whatever our scouts recommend us in the first month of their scouting mission is who we're allowed to sign up for that window. So we've got our shortlist primed and ready. We're going to do the exact same in December in preparation for January, but let's get some signings on the board. It's been a long time coming, but finally, I present you our first signing of this challenge as recommended by the Slovenian Luka Ergil. We have brought Florian Kruger, not to be confused with Freddy Kruger, over from Germany. The 21-year-old striker has instantly become our best attacker here at the club, and we purchased him from Urza Berger Auer for 5.2 million pounds. But it is what it is. Hopefully, he's going to become a gun for us in the future. He also can play on the left-hand side, which I didn't really know about him, and it just adds that extra sauce to his game. The scout did me a solid on this one. Thank you, Luca. Now, we all know your attack can win you games, but defense wins you championships, and that's the exact target area we have gone for here as the signing of the Aussie Harry Suter from Stoke City. We've pursued the 21-year-old showing great potential, and from down under, he is ready to represent Sir BCHD's Malaga. Trust me, we're using our funds as efficiently as possible right here. Jimmy did catch our eye over a Ral Oviedo, and we have chosen the Spaniard to hold it down in the midfield. Hopefully, he can gain a starting role in this squad. So, welcome to Malaga, son. He's the oldest player at 23. And he's also a great option in front of the defense, being a defensive mind and center defensive mid. And I tried getting a loan deal for Jed Steer, but I also realized that we had pretty decent goalkeepers. So, I focused on the outfield positions, and it's paid in dividends. Pretty much no more money left to spend. I think it's time to get on with the rest of the season, simulate to January, and see what else our scouts have to recommend us. So it's the halfway stage of the season. We're in January right now. We are currently still in the hunt for a playoff spot. Just two points outside the top six, which is probably going to be our main target for this season. Do we have any emergency funds? We've got about five million to splash. Hopefully that can get us up to maybe about six. That'll be definitely spendable. Musa Cilia from Untrek could be an offensive option. David Rea from Brentford, I think, could be a perfect fit, but might just overexceed our budget right now. Ooh, Jordan Osorio, the Venezuelan from Parma, definitely could be an option next season. Right now, I just don't think he fits into the financial future. Despite us actually sending them to specific countries, it looks like we're just getting any old players, like players from all around Europe. Okay, yeah, thank you, Scout. Virgil van Dijk, have you taken a look at our bank account, mate? We could barely afford his left foot. I think the proposal of being able to sign David Raya was too good, and I decided to go for a keeper, noticing that a couple of ours were on loan. So we definitely have a starter right here for four million pounds. A 25-year-old is coming over from England. And we have poached Brentford starter in between the sticks. Thanks to whichever scout recommended this one, you know who you are. As we've been able to sign a Frenchman to the side, we've got Musa Cilia from Untrecht. who's our cheapest striking option and is definitely one for the future. For 2.6 million pounds flat out, he's going to be Kruger's strike partner in up top. So welcome to the side. Those two January transfers. I didn't expect to do too much business in January, but those two winter transfers have been revolutionary. I didn't think I made this clear at the beginning, but I want every single one of the players in our starting 11 to be recommended by a scout at some stage. I don't know how many seasons or transfer windows it's going to take, but that's the kind of objective I'm going for. La Liga Smart Bank season has drawn to a close, and on the last day, our boys somehow snuck into the playoff spots in the top six, collecting those 67 points that were required. Somehow, we are in the running for the promotion to La Liga. In the Copa de España, I can't imagine we got too far. Actually, it was further than I expected. Round of 16, knockout to Granada, 3-1. So here, I've simulated the playoffs, and we have done the unthinkable, knocking out third place Leganes, 4-3 on aggregate. What a crazy fixture. Our boys have booked themselves a place in the promotion playoff final, the two-legged affair, and we've seen the first leg. Now it's time for the home leg. Can we secure it? I'm going to simulate this one against Girona, and we can successfully return Malaga back to La Liga Santander, and it's achieved a 2-1 victory. It was Freddy Krueger and Skepovic to score the goals off the bench. He's headed out the club, but he has granted Malaga's return back to the top flight. From sixth placed hopefuls to promotion playoff winners, Sir BCHD's Malaga are back in the big time, baby. Our top goal scorer, the golden boot winner, the German Florian Kruger with 17 goals and an assist. This season has been nothing short but remarkable for the German import. We have a Chavaria who is going to be departing the club. 13 goals and two assists. We also do have our homegrown talent who are promoted from the youth academy, Rafael Guardado, who managed eight goals 
goals and 10 assists from the middle of the park. Skepovic, who in reality scored the goal to get us into the top flight and win that promotion battle. Seven goals for him all season. The captain, Alberto Escazi, from the back with six goals and two. Now January signing, Musa Silla with two goals and two assists. Sotar played pretty much every single game this season and David Raya definitely got his starting 11 position on lock in the second half of the season. Now let's get this season two party started. The celebrations are over and now it's time to shift our focus towards surviving La Liga. Now upon the club's return to La Liga, we have been gifted with about 40 million pounds to spend. That is exquisite. Not only do we have a bit more financial freedom, we can upgrade the squad where it needs it most and definitely bring in some quality. But it's still down to the scouts. I've got the exact same instructions, the exact same countries, and now we're actually starting to get results for the winger option. You can tell some of these guys have been going all year, 361 days scouted so far. But for now, our scouting missions have stayed the same and they are running smoothly. Now here we go. Here's a La Liga signing I can get behind. Mohamed Simikan has finally been recommended to us. I'm going to add him to the shortlist. That was definitely a signing not possible last season with our brand new pot of wealth. I think we might get that one over the line. And in terms of the wingers, here is our first few results we've received back. Matteo Tramoni, the Frenchman out of Cagliari, might be an interesting purchase. Now before we simulate a month into August, I just decided to go ham and go straight towards the target this season. And Maxwell Corner, a player who was actually recommended in a report last time around. We kept him on the transfer hub and we have made it a permanent deal. Our brand new number two, the Ivorian, can play left back, left wing. I remember he was such a beast of a wonder kid in FIFA 16. And he is our solution for our wing back crisis we've got going on right now. Arriving from Olympic Lyon for 9.3 million pounds. It just suits him. Our boy Lucas Dumont, the Belgian, recommended him to us. So thanks for that one, Scout. Second signing is also yet another addition to our defensive department. We hinted at this transfer last season. It is Jordan Osorio. The Venezuelan was recommended by Yodado, our Spanish scout. For 8.5 million pounds, we purchased him from the Serie A powerhouse. And for 8.5 million pounds, that was enough to bring over the number six as he'll be a brand new stalwart center half that'll get game time week in, week out. As you've seen there in the emails, we've loaned in Louis Appenda from Club Bruges in the Pro League. The Belgian arrives. The 21-year-old is just going to have a little trial here. We needed some more firepower up front, a striker reinforcement that'll hopefully get some game time in and off the bench, cause an impact. And of course, the defense is going to be improved 10 times over as Mohamed Simikan. I was very intrigued once he showed up at our scout report and I was glad that he can play right back as well because that's where we're probably going to be deploying the Frenchman. Arriving for 12.4 million pounds, we sign on the dotted line to get him over from Stade Rene and he has easily become our most expensive signing and one of the best scout recommendations yet. Now, I've taken a glance at our attacking mid scout report back from Chong Kun Lee, our Chinese scout and there's someone that's piqued my interest. It's the Cam Hammond Jr. Triore. I think he's an absolute baller. Another Ivorian to join us this summer for 6 million pounds. He's affordable in budget and could be that young hungry talent we need. And just like that, it's a Serie A double swoop. Hammond Jr. Triore has signed on the dotted line for 7.5 million pounds. And thanks to our ever helpful GTN scouts, we've picked up Matteo Tramoni from Cagliari. The French left midfielder is 21 and we have paid the price of 2.35 million pounds for his services. This is how our starting 11 is looking headed into our first La Liga campaign and pretty much every single position has been recommended by our scout besides Guardado who is the homegrown talent. The Spanish centre mid is the only one out of this team who hasn't been signed and recommended by our GTN scout. So we've tried to stay true and loyal to our plan and transfer policy. This summer has really done us a solid but is this enough to survive in Spain's top flight? I seriously have no clue but that transfer window has left us with about 4 million pounds to spend in January. So the resources are still there just to act as an emergency fund, but let's hope we don't have to resort to it. Now we've reached January and I've opted for some experience in the middle of the park. Oscar Valentin, who was requested to us and suggested by our scouts in season one, from Rio Vallecano in the second tier. We need a dressing room leader, a wise guy to lead the youth in our team. We need a solid mixture and to hit the sweet spot between youth and experience. So we've accepted that one. It's gone through for two million pounds. Like I said, not too much money to work with, so we've had to resort to a last second option. We currently just have our heads above water, sitting in 16th with 18 points, just hovering above the relegation zone. Definitely not territory we want to slip into in the second half of the season. Let's hope we push further up the table and claim a mid-table spot. So recommended FC, the lads have gone and done it, beaten the drop and done Mission Impossible. Reaching 43 points this season, that was more than enough that they needed to survive 
and they have crept up into 14th place. Still no mid-table finish, but hey, it's survival and that's all that matters. In the Copa de España, don't even think they got too far, honestly. Round at 16, they got knocked out to SDI bar 2-1. In terms of our best performers in our squad report, who were the best that kept us up this year? And we've got Louis Appenda. I think I've got to make this signing permanent, lads. He was our top goal scorer with 13 goals and one assist. The Belgian adapting to life rather quickly here in La Liga. Second highest goal scorer is Florian Kruger. He had more goal involvements though with 16 as Maxwell Cornet from left back with 10 goals. Unless the assistant was deploying him on the left wing, which is a position he can play. That is an outstanding effort from the wing back as Rafael Guardado, our homegrown talent with four goals and one assist. Musa Celia off the bench with three goals. And Christian, a player who I really didn't count to be in our first starting team, but in 17 appearances, he scored three goals and three assists. And the man in between the sticks, we've got David Raya. In 42 appearances, he managed to conjure up 10 clean sheets. In terms of the player's financial situation and the scout recommendations that are really climbing the charts, we have Florian Kruger. Freddy Kruger's son, the German, now valued at 18.5 million pounds and the highest rated player at the club, Maxwell Cornet, up to an 18 million valuation. In season two, objectives were reached, but is it now time to start dreaming bigger? Do our scouts have it in them in the next campaign to recommend us some ballers to sign? Let's see what kind of reports we get back as we enter yet another blockbuster summer transfer window. Now, for some reason, this season we have less of a starting transfer budget than the last where we came up from the second division. So I don't get that. Doesn't really make sense. Make it make sense. But it's still a pretty similar amount of that around that 40 million mark. Last time around we had about 45. Now our first piece of business here in season three, we've gotten things started straight away. We have loaned in the Slovakian talent Thomas Suslov. He's going to be joining us from Dutch outfit FC Gretingen and I just feel like he is a great attacking, just silky option in off the bench. Also what was another major selling point in me bringing him in. He is so versatile. He can play at center forward slash striker and can also play out on the right mid spot. Unfortunately, he's only here for a one year loan. I want to try and make that permanent. Now, the moment I saw these two suggested in my scout report, I pounced. We have got a great center back option right here. Denis Popov, the Ukrainian from West Brom. We're going to poach him from the championship. He's still only 23, a 77 overall. I've never seen him, never heard of him, but he looks like a hard man. I wouldn't want to mess with him. I don't think any attacker in the world wants to mess with him with that haircut. So he is going to be a brand new starting defender. The Ukrainian arrives. I think we're really focusing on like the Baltic slash Slav regions of Europe right here as we have recruited Ante Palaversa. The Croatian at centre mid from Man City. He's a loan out talent. So he hasn't really gotten any game time for the citizens. And we have decided to splash 11.9 million pounds. It is well under his value. So we have snatched a bargain there from Pep Guardiola. I think the better our club becomes and the more class players we bring in, the better suggestions we get. It's fight or flight, baby. Hopefully we don't have a bit of second season syndrome. So this January, the only pre-contracts we were able to find is literally players that are worthy for our backup brigade. We've got a backup goalkeeper here, Jed Steer. He was recommended to us in season one. I was actually going to go for him as our main goalie, but we opted out of it. And now he's joining us as just another pair of hands to help us out. The Dutch defender out at AZ Alkmaar is a utility player, provides some experience, and is also at a decent quality. So they'll be joining us next season. And they're both arriving on a free. We can Includes season three, finishing off in a record high place, eighth. We've come out collecting 52 points this season, still well away from the top seven. That 10 point margin feels like so much more. We could have easily finished in the bottom half of the table. Very small margins at play, but the Malaga boys came through. No European football qualification, to my knowledge, is in the Copa de España. I believe they got knocked out really early. 2 0 Talmeria in the round of 32. And let's see how the fan favorites, the quality acquisitions, and the new signings perform this season. Then we have a Florian Kruger again, two seasons in a row, being the top goal scorer. He is our golden boot winner, the ruthless German, with 21 goals and three assists, 24 goal contributions, just like the man's age. And he's partner in crime in up top, the Frenchman Musa Sia, with nine goals and an assist. Maxwell Corner again. I don't know if he's doing this all from left back or left wing. The Ivorians involved, eight goals and four assists. Rafael Guardado from the midfield with four goals and five. And the Croatian Ante Pelaversa in his first year with three goals and one assist. Junior Traore always making himself known. It's an attacking force with three goals and four assists. Julio Martinez off the bench with three goals. And in between the sticks, it was another 10 clean sheet season for David Raya, but this time around, he got a cheeky assist. Financially, Florian Kruger has been typically, I don't know, statistically, the best suggestion from our scouts. The striker does not stop scoring and his valuation continues to soar. Valued on the transfer market at 45 million pounds on the dot. Next up is Maxwell Cornet approaching his prime. No one really contends close to him, but we still 
still have a lot more work to do in improving this squad and aiming for European qualification at the start of Season 4. And I'm liking the look of that transfer budget, 71.4 million pounds. We're going to have a field day in this market. Now, Robert Gulabev, our Russian scout on a mission, he's been responsible for all our winger suggestions and we've finally taken him up on his word. He's been an absolute G, suggesting a free agent in Ningio Vincente, a Spaniard who I believe was originally from Athletic Bilbao. Don't quote me on that, but we picked him up on a free. We needed some depth and a bit more quality in those winger positions and we've got exactly what we needed for literally the price of nothing. Now, just like a London bus, one doesn't come in forever and then two all of a sudden in a row arrive at your bus stop. We have made two winger signings back to back and this time we've secured the services of Japanese right midfielder Ritsu Doan. He's arrived from PSV for £25 million on the dot. I might be draining him up into a left midfielder just to add something different to his game, but he just makes our winging and attacking threat that much more potent. The quality is clear with the Asian superstar, and I'm so ecstatic that we got him for such a great price. Now, it's been abundantly clear that we still have yet to replace a Pender, the lone Belgian that left all those years ago, and it's really dented our attacking hopes, but now we have scouted and sourced another German, the strike partner for Kruger in up top. It is Mergen Berishap from Hellas Verona. Still in that same price region, we have snagged him for 27.4 million pounds, and the 25-year-old German who's approaching his prime will be the prime candidate to partner up with good old Florian Kruger. Could a German duo be the key to unlocking every single defense in La Liga? I sure hope so. Malaga sure hope so. Finally, last but not least, it wouldn't be a summer transfer window or a transfer window in general without signing a defensive improvement, and this time we have gone after John claire Totibo. It's one of Barcelona's own and one of the finest European defenders on the market. We're going to happily accept a defensive reinforcement that that is going to help us out so much this season and unfortunately we couldn't secure the services of our first choice, Abdou Diallo. Our brand new number 23, I think we have spent every single penny meaningfully and we have gone after the right players thanks to our six scouts that have always kept our options open. But we've got to bring proceedings to a halt right there. The German big dogs are circling like sharks. Both RB Leipzig and Leverkusen submitting 66.8 million pound offers but I've just flat out blocked them all. And on the sales front this time around we have actually decided to ship off a few players just to raise some emergency funds for January and that starts with Ivan Calero. He's moving to BSC Young Boys for 1.5 million. Busafiane is going to Alaves for 2.3 and Christian becomes a baggy departing to West Brom for 2.95 million pounds. Could this be the year that our scout recommended squad qualifies for Europe and gets Malaga back to the heights that they once were 10 years ago. I've got my fingers and toes crossed. Let's see what goes down. And the Spanish climb continues up the La Liga table. We have Malaga finishing in sixth and qualifying for Europa League football come season five. You know what? We might only be one or two world-class signing suggestions away from finishing in the top four as Atletico Madrid take out the title. Barca, Real Madrid and Villarreal make up the top four. Over in the Copa de España, Atletico Madrid win in a Madrid derby 2-1 against Real. And we ended up losing in the round of 16 to the eventual finalist Real Madrid 4-3 on penalties. Let's see if the lads are ready for European football next season and if they could juggle multiple competitions in the once. Could there be anyone else that was our top goal scorer and carry us to European qualification? Florian Kruger, 24 goals and 1 assist for the German marksman and his fellow partner got himself 18 and 2, 20 goal contributions in his first campaign here in Spain. And Maxwell Corner continues to break defender norms from left back, impressing year after year with 16 goals and 6 assists. Three goals and seven assists from the now captain Tadebo in his first campaign with a goal and Palaversa with one and one. Both Junior Traore and Ritsu Doan picked up a goal and five assists as we continue to scroll on down the free agent Ingenio Vicente. Number one. I just dropped my metal straw. And our goalkeeper number one, David De Raya, got himself 12 clean sheets. I think Blind Fred could have predicted this one because Freddy Krueger is our most valuable player. He's estimated on the transfer market at £82 million and is one of our most prized assets. We've successfully got Malaga back on a European tour. It might not be the Champions League, but now the Malaga fans, after half a decade, actually have something to cheer for. Start booking your flights, get your tickets, because Scout Recommendation FC is in the Europa League. Now, a problem 
problem area that I'm looking to invest in season five. We've got the cam spot, the center attack in mid. We definitely need someone better than Junior Traore. The first team starter, a world-class baller, and I'm looking for some bomber suggestions from our boy John Conhe if we are to compete with the right frame of mind and achieve our objectives this season. That is exactly what we've done, being successful in the pursuit of our South American attacker, brand new Malaga boy, Alexis McAllister, arriving from Brighton for a club record transfer fee of 57.4 million pounds. Is he going to follow in the footsteps of Isco Disco, a talent who launched his career at the club? Can McAllister provide his best services approaching his prime? And with the snap of a finger, just like that, he makes the attacking quadrant look that much more dangerous. The jigsaw might just be complete. I think we're perfect. Alexis, do us proud, and who knows what type of ceiling we can reach this season, as Freddy Krueger and Simakan have been caught up to their respective national teams. Despite being our golden child and best recommended signing by our scouts, Kruger fails to become a European champion on the international scene, losing out 1-0 to the Netherlands in the 2024 Euro Final. We kept things short and sweet this time. We knew what we wanted and we went out and got it. McAllister goes down as our only purchase and I'm ready to kick on with the rest of the season. Well, would you take a look at this in three seasons from 8th to 6th to now 3rd, finishing above Barcelona and hold on a second. I think we even came equal runners up. Technically, we came out in third, but with 79 points, we're tied with three teams, including Atletico, Real Madrid take home the La Liga title. But that means Malaga are back in the Champions League. What a season they have had. That is one of the best in club history as we move on over to the Copa de España. And they have actually gone ahead and won the Spanish Cup 1-0 against Atletico in the final. I wish I went ahead and played that. But I think the final was held in like sometime in like April or something. So it was it's kind of through the season. We couldn't really have our say, but they went in on away goals against Real Batiste in the semis and did the impossible like Leicester versus Chelsea in the FA Cup. So PCHD gets a hold of some silverware. Here is how the Europa League panned out for our boys as they made their debut in Europe after so long. It's been a while between drinks, but they finished on top of Group B with 12 points against Benfica, Celtic and Victoria Plisson. In the round of 32, they came up against Feyenoord, destroyed them 5-1 on aggregate over in the round of 16. It was an absolute madness against Nar a nine goal thriller as they edged at 5-4. Wow, that one was crazy. As Liverpool faced our wrath, 4-3 in the quarterfinals, progressing through to the semis and booking their spot in the Europa League final up against none other than Spurs. Now, if we do want to play the famous Chiellini clip, we've got to go ahead and actually take it home. Could we do a double this season and also become European champions? Malaga, oh Malaga, you're pulling on my heartstrings. The team we've assembled, the scout recommendations, it has all clicked into place and now we have got one game to send this team off on a high. The lads are ready. The boys are off the bus. Hopefully we achieve the desired outcome. Here is our Spurs are lining up with a threatening side. Still have Kane. Still have got Son. Some OG still in their starting 11 like Hugo Lloris in between the sticks. Fascinating stuff but here goes nothing. Now maybe with my own transfer input this wouldn't have taken about five seasons. It could have maybe taken three or four but here we are. The scouts have done their jobs. They've allowed us to sign some iconic players that will go down in club history. Fan favourites, cult heroes that are up against it tonight. Let's go ahead and kick things off as Harry Kane for Spurs gets the ball rolling. Guardado tracks back and he gets it through to Palaversa. And now Kruger, something can happen here. Kruger into the path of his fellow countryman, Berisha. And he will cut it back. It is, oh wow, oh wow. Doan with the shot. And Hugo Lloris slaps it away with his cat -like reflexes. So there's Scott McTominay. We've got Cornet tracking back. But the gap between our midfield and attack is extremely palpable as Harry Kane gets a block shot away. Roles on this right-hand side. McTominay cuts back in and he takes a pop. And that's David Raya's first piece of action and he called to it. That'll be half-time. Quite occasionally affair. Not too many chances. Not too many openings. But we hope that'll change in the second half. 64 minutes on the clock and still no one showing any signs of getting the opening goal in this Europa League final. Doan. Finds Maxwell Corner with a bombarding run. And look at this. All of a sudden, Kruger all alone with his first real opportunity. And he doesn't need too many invitations, this bloke. He's been our most reliable, trustworthy goal scorer ever since the days of La Liga BBVA. One, two, three, whatever you want to call it. He's been there since the start. He's the definition of an OG. And our number 16, the fox in the box. He was left free and unmarked. And that's exactly what you don't want to do with Freddy Kruger. A crucial turn. And the finish was completely 
absolutely sublime, flawless, picture perfect, and the German knows exactly what he's doing. It's taken 67 minutes, but boy, it was worth it. The Germans, they're working their magic up top. It's them against the world at the moment, and Kruger could get the second, but the ball took a bubble. He got too excited and thought he caught Loris out, but it was well off target, and that would have gone down as a goal for the history books. There we have it. Spurs lose yet another cup final. Chiellini say those famous words, baby. Tottenham is the history of the Tottenham. And Malaga not only qualify for the Champions League, but win the Europa League title. Thanks to Kruger, Malaga's poster boy, and Guardado, the homegrown talent, gets to lift up the trophy. How satisfying. What a moment it is for the scout recommended signings, doing it all in that green purple number. It's a jazzy little away kit as the celebrations will get underway. Our number 15, an icon and a youth academy legend, lifts up that trophy and boy oh boy, the party is just getting started. Drink it in people, all it took was one piece of individual brilliance and the Europa League was ours. Florian Kruger adds to his goal collection this season with 27. That tally has got to be one of his career highs with six assists. Mergen Berisha, his strike partner with 20 and four. We've got Alexis McAllister being a summer transfer hit. The Argentine with 19 goals and 14 assists. Double figures in both departments for his first campaign, just like Maxwell Cornet, who has been kind of low key, one of our best signings of the video. 27 goal contributions from the left back, and he also got an assist in the final. Musa Cilia off the bench with 10 goals and three. Our captain, Rafael Guardado, with nine goals and 12 assists, as Jean-Claire Tadebo from the back with five goals and one. Palaversa made his presence known, and I don't think Ritsu Doan got the game time he deserved this time around with two goals and two assists. The Japanese didn't really hit the ground running, and in between the sticks, David Raya definitely proved his worth with 26 clean sheets as the Spanish shot stopper goes from strength to strength. He's broken records. There's not too much I can say about our German sharpshooter as he has gone now up to an 103 million pound valuation. I know it might be heartbreaking. I was initially going to end things here, but I want to go for season six and just see how they perform in the Champions League. I'm not going to make any signings, not going to do too many drastic changes. I just want to see Malaga's return in Europe's prime competition. A long awaited return is finally here. Drawn into Group D, the Champions League sees them up against Manchester United, Club Bruges, and Lokomotiv Moscow. So I think, I mean, relatively, I think they can qualify. Not top the group, but at least get to the round of 16. With the group stages being over, Malaga secured at their round of 16 spot. Could they replicate that European run all those years ago? We'll find out as United finish top, undefeated, and in the round of 16. If it wasn't the red side of Manchester, it is going to be the citizens taking them down in the round of 16 for one. They got matched up against Pep Guardiola's best. And unfortunately, their dream European run ends there as they lost to the eventual champions. I still think that was a noble effort. Final look at the entire squad. Scout suggested signings only, plus a homegrown talent. It has been one hell of a journey. One of my favorite, like, not really a rebuild, but one of my favorite videos and journeys I've been on through our FIFA 21. I just found it super satisfying, so challenging as well. Finding hidden gems, signing the right players, and trusting in the GTN scouts. I don't think I'm ever going to trust them again, but hey, it was fun whilst it lasted. It's job done. Sir BCHD has been successful once more, and here in Spain, we are signing out, so hopefully you did enjoy. Make sure to drop the video a like down below, hit subscribe, and turn on those notifications. Let me know down in the comments what other concepts and ideas I should try out here on the channel as FIFA 21's game cycle starts to dwindle to a close. Make sure you follow all my socials linked in the description. As always, I've been BCHD. Have a great day, and I'll catch you all in the very next video.